Welcome back, friends, to another New World video. Today, we're going to be talking about artifacts. When it comes to upgrading these bad boys in the gypsum kiln, it can be quite an investment. You're looking at, I think it's 500 dark matter, five gypsum orbs, a chromatic seal, uh, an armor, weapon, or jewelry matrix, often more than 10,000 gold worth of materials to upgrade one of these. So a lot of people have some hesitancy as to, you know, what, what perk do I want to put on for the final upgrade? And that's what we're going to cover in today's video. We're going to be going through this list here, every single artifact in the game, and talking about uh, which perk I have upgraded the item with, or if I haven't upgraded it yet, what do I plan to upgrade it with and why? And in a few cases, we'll offer, you know, a couple different options for PvE and PvP. Now in this list, there are two artifacts that are absent for me. One is at the end. We don't have the quick draw gloves yet, but we can just take a look on New World Database and give you guys a perk recommendation there. The other artifact that cruelly from Amazon, in my opinion, I don't have is the artifact life staff. This one comes from the PvP rewards track, and despite my best attempts, I still can't get vengeance. I'm just trying and trying, but I do know what perk I definitely want to put on that when we get it. So those artifacts will be at the end of the video, uh, just in case you think that like, oh, Baggins forgot those. But with that being said, let's kick off with this list. And uh, I will be timestamping the video, so you should be able to scrub along. If there's a particular artifact you're interested in, just scrub through the video. You can find its name, and uh, we'll be talking about it there. So the first artifact in the list is Odo. Now, uh, Odo is one of these um, weapons that doesn't come with a jam slot, but you can put a jam slot in it. In order to do that, you will need gem setting pins, which you can buy off of your faction vendor. I'm just going to go ahead and show that real quick because this is going to come up quite a few times in the video. There are a few artifacts in the game that don't have a gem slot, but you can put one in. So if I go to my faction vendor here, Teos, I go to the faction board, rewards, and I think it's on the third tier. So it's called Exubitor for the Covenant, but it could be something else for uh, other factions. And here it is. Uh, so just sort of halfway between these two lines here. So if we go to the top of Lumen, the bottom of Exubitor, I have gem setting pins. They only cost 100 gold, 300 faction tokens. That's the only way you can get them in the game. So if you are missing these, just go ahead and buy one of those. Um, always handy to have, especially if they introduce more artifacts in the game that don't have a gem slot, but you can put a gem slot. Gem slot is great in Odo. One other uh, alternative, and this is more for PvP, in fact, it, it is only for PvP, is the Burdening Smite perk. So that one looks like this here. It's the Steel Flail Charm. Smite hits against targets extend their active cooldowns by up to 35%. This is actually really crazy. Nothing else in the game does this. So Burdening Smite might, might be a consideration for PvP, but generally a gem slot. Um, then you can put a, a diamond in it to increase healing. You could go for Moonstone. You could go for Jasper. You could go for Opal. Uh, gem slots are very versatile and often one of the best, you know, upgrades that you can put on a weapon if they don't already have them. So gem slot or Burdening Smite, which is the Steel Flail Charm recommendation for Odo. For Deep Freeze, my recommendation is actually Frost Attunement. So for that, you will need a Frozen Weapon Shard. Uh, I do currently have Unbroken Winds on my Ice Gauntlet, and it is a lot of fun in PvP to uh, hit them with the Wind Chill ability. But if you want to use this in PvE, Wind Chill is very troll because it pushes enemies back and it can, you know, really mess up pulls for your team. So I think Frost Attunement is a good idea. I did consider Pylon Burst, but the problem with uh, Deep Freeze is that you want to be applying Chill to enemies, which you get from Ultimate Chill chills so you can't really go fully into pylon because you do want to get this ultimate over here i think you always want to be using ice storm and most of the time ice shower as well as a way to activate the perks on deep freeze so fully maxing out uh, pylon didn't feel like it was worth it and as a result pylon burst i think was better on the armor so i just went for frost human or at least that's what i'm planning to go for anyway so my recommendation when it comes to uh, the Deep Freeze is Frost Attunement. Another alternative that I think would be great more for PvP is Empowered Ice Spike if you want to uh, potentially one-shot people. And you could also take a look at Deadly Frost as well, so you can use Ice Shower more often. Very, very powerful perk for zoning enemies off. So PvP, Deadly Frost, Empowered Ice Spike, PvE, or just like as a generally good perk, I think Frost Attunement's actually not too bad. Uh, but you will want to take Pylon to take full advantage of that, so you have to spec the Pylon ability. Life Taker is one of my most used artifacts in the game. I often pair this with a life staff, and I think the best upgrade that you can go for it is Putrefying Scream, which you get with the Oracalcum Void Gauntlet Charm. Um, it just adds a lot of anti-healing to the item. If I open up my inventory here and then we try and find it, uh, it gives a disease on hit, reducing targets, incoming healing by 43%, outgoing healing. While it is more of a PvP sort of thing, it does work great in nature mutations. It works good in dungeons that have the vampiric mutation. Just really good at shutting down healing, and I think it's an incredibly versatile perk when actually placed on the Void Gauntlet. So Putrefying Scream 
my recommendation is a one size fits all you can't put a gem slot into this even though it just does void damage still no gem slot upgrade so putrefying scream is the option michael the kite shield sadly ends up you know not seeing a whole lot of use i think there's a few people using it out here but uh my preference with the flail has either been able to play tower shield for tanking or i like actually to go with the right uh, round shield to do a bit of damage but if you are going to use michael a kite shield it's pretty much always going to be paired with a flail i think not many people are playing a sword with a kite shield so to that extent you're probably looking at a flail perk like burdening smite for pvp although i do believe this is stronger when it's placed on the weapon interestingly enough i think enchanted ward is a new option that they've added to kite shields and that would probably be what it would go for here enchanted ward uh, as a way to just reduce even more incoming damage seems like a pretty solid option for me so um, when it comes to changing right now just out of curiosity i can show you guys here my upgrade currently is mending vortex but um, i think i will replace this with enchanted ward at some point uh, probably just because it's going to be a bit more consistent and i think this perk is just as powerful when placed on the armor uh, I guess they're interchangeable, but Enchanted Ward is going to be my recommendation. The Butcher is another artifact that doesn't have a gem slot in it by default, so gem setting pins by far going to be your best option compared to anything else here. I don't think there's any else, anything else to say other than just go for gem setting pins. Definitely the best upgrade here to allow it to do damage, or if you want to tank with it, uh, gem setting pins obviously allows you to put a Carnelian gem in it, which then turns it, it turns it on as a tanking weapon as well. The Finisher, or the Artifact Rapier, one of the best options and most consistent options we see for with this one is Keen empowered uh, in order to have keenly empowered you need the ancient bear paw one other option that I think is kind of interesting with the artifact rapier is the thwarting strikes it's the one that gives you uh, extra damage when you have grit I'm trying to find this in the list and I'm failing right now. It's somewhere down here. We're going to find it. There we go. Drop a vine with sap. Um, it turns out flurry and flourish and finish both have grit on them by default, which are pretty commonly, uh, you know, that these are often used. So I think there's something in here that gives it grit. Yeah, we can get grit there. And then there's also uh, flurry has grit. So these are often staples when it comes to rapier DPS. So it's worth considering thwarting strikes but one of the problems that i often hear people describe with rapier is it doesn't really have any way to give itself in power so keenly empowered uh, gonna be a great option to go for for finisher gladiator is an artifact that i haven't really played around with much yet and i think the general consensus is it's not the greatest of artifacts it's got some weird perks already locked into it with diminishing shield bash and fortifying shield rush but it's on a round shield and just you know uh, usually not what you want to see on a round shield it also doesn't have the shield aggression perk that most round shields do to give you extra weapon damage that being said, I think if you did want to play with it, uh, going for Enchanted just for a little bit of extra damage because it does kind of, you know, with a round shield that lends itself more to DPS or, of course, going for the good old Enchanted board as well. A bit more expensive, but this is a pretty solid perk in both PvE and PvP. So Enchanted or Enchanted board. Um, you could even look for Vicious as well if you don't currently have it on your weapon, but a lot of people do run Vicious on the weapon. So probably Enchanted or Enchanted Ward and then stacking it with a sword or a flail, I guess. Freya's Francisca is a hatchet that is often seen more in PvE and not so much in PvP. Without That being said, though, regardless, I think one of the best perks you can put on this is just Vicious. Uh, when you get a backstab, you do extra damage. When you get a crit, you do extra damage. Um, Vicious is just like a well-rounded perk. It's pretty solid in all situations. If you were going to be using it as PvE DPS, and you consistently knew that that was what you were going to be playing. You could go for Rogue as well, uh, which is just like a stronger version of Vicious, but only activates when you're getting backstabs. So it's a little bit less consistent, um, higher uptime or higher damage when you are getting uh, that sort of situation. But Vicious for PvE, for PvE, for tanking, uh, I think, you know, Vicious is just a, a solid perk to put on Freya's Francisca here. The Wall, which is one of my favorite artifacts in the game. I do love the Wall, just the fact that it's called the Wall. <laughs> it is uh, it is a lot of fun. Uh, the perk that I went for on the Wall was Fortifying Shield Rush. I often play this with a sword. If you wanted to play it with a flail, then I guess you'd have to look for a sort of more generic perk. To that extent, Enchanted Ward, obviously now a new option on shields could be great as well. Uh, but for me, my wall upgrade was Fortifying Shield Rush, and uh, that's what I'm going to recommend that you put on it. But like I say, if you do want to play this with flail uh, in mind, then Enchanted Ward probably a pretty solid option there as well. Pestilence or the Artifact Blunderbuss is another artifact that doesn't have a gem slot, and a gem slot by far probably one of the best upgrades for this, because then you can, you know, boost up its damage with a damage conversion gem. Uh, you could use an opal in here for extra damage. You could use uh, Jasper, as seems to be somewhat popular as well. Maybe not as good with the Blunderbuss. So yeah, gem setting pins, great upgrade in here. Uh, if you were looking to play it specifically in PvP and only
only ever in PvP, I think there is some value in putting Plague Splitting Grenades on it as well, which I can't actually see in this list right now, but I'm sure it's in here somewhere. There we go. Reinforced Steel Blunderbuss Charm. Yeah, if you really want to lead it into the anti-heal side of things and maybe you're pairing it with a Fire Staff where Fire Staff's going to do more damage than Plague Splitting Grenades could set up with all the other anti-healing, but Gem Slot is usually the uh, option that you see most people going for, gem setting pins to upgrade Pestilence. Bolt Caster is another artifact that doesn't have a gem slot, but you can't put one into it for whatever reason. Well, actually, I think it's because it already converts its damage to lightning. Uh, but yeah, no gem slot available to Bolt Caster. The upgrade that I went for on this bad boy was Keenly Jagged. I think this is just a very safe, very consistent option. If you were going to be playing it in PvE, uh, Penetrating Rapid Shot um, is very good for single target damage, which is kind of where the Bolt Caster shines as well. But Keenly Jagged is going to be my recommendation as like a one size fits all. Although I do want to say that play crits could be uh, a, a worthy consideration as well. More of a PvP centric uh, perk there, but play crits. Uh, worth considering, but Keenly Jagged is going to be the upgrade I would recommend, friends, just for some extra DPS on top. The Abyss, just like Bolt Caster, converts its damage to Void, and as a result, no gem slot in this, and we can't put a gem into it. The upgrade of choice for me was Enfeebling Maelstrom. This is great in both PvE and PvP. In particular, Enfeebling Maelstrom on a Great Axe is like a, just something that you always look to see for in mutated expeditions, but if you wanted to play this as a more PvP-centric weapon, especially in 3v3 Arena, Crippling Reap is very, very powerful powerful or you could just go for the vicious upgrade as well vicious is also a nice one size fits all so uh, in my recommendation it's going to be enfeebly maelstrom um, if you want to bring a bit more utility or you could just go for vicious for a bit more damage crippling reap if you want to be more pvp centric with it serenity just like the previous artifacts also doesn't have a gem slot in it but gem setting pins is by far the only valid upgrade to go for on serenity in my opinion i think gem setting pins is just just head and shoulders above everything else uh, most of the time it means that you're going to be putting an opal gem into the item because when your stamina is not full you do extra damage and it's very easy to meet that criteria with a great sword because every single time you do a heavy attack while you're in onslaught mode it takes some stamina away, which basically keeps the opal gem. So you just did, you know, by putting an opal gem into the greatsword, it just basically says the greatsword does 12% extra damage. Interestingly enough, I'm actually trying a moonstone right now, uh, where I do this sort of weird thing where I only have two abilities. Um, and then it's very easy to have the moonstone online while these abilities are, you know, coming off of cooldown. So we have 20% extra damage. It's, uh, it's an okay thing, but... Uh, that's probably something for a separate video anyway. So yeah, gem setting pins, uh, by far the best upgrade to go for. And then typically an opal gem, but you could try a moonstone. Not sure if this is worth it, but gem setting pins upgrade serenity with it next up we have the mechanic which is the artifact musket this musket's a bit of a meme um i have tried to play with it a few times in the past it's traps and sticky bombs cooldown reduced by 20 percent, and then you got the perk for the trap and the sticky bomb the, the way that i played this was with a, a speedy build where i just threw down the traps over and over again to try and just maintain that 33 percent movement speed boost and i used it with the um artifact boots to give me you know even more movement speed or like increase the duration of it i think if you wanted to try and make this properly work you just go for the attunement perk so that's the upgrade that i went for it i went for arboreal attunement see if we can find it in the list here there it is yes yeah, so i went for arboreal attunement and a nature gem just to have it do quite a bit of nature damage because the musket is pretty much only a thing that's used in pvp you don't really see musket being used in pve um, in pvp it's pretty common for people to run uh, thrust protection which is obviously the main damage musket does it's uh, thrust with the bullets um, flame protection is also pretty common as well, which is like from powder burn and stuff. So if you convert some of the damage to nature, nobody's really running nature protection in PvP and also in PvP or PvE rather. Uh, the lost and the corrupted are also weak to nature damage. So yeah, arboreal achievement was the upgrade there. And the 1.5 second cooldown, that's probably as often as you're going to be landing a shot with the musket unless you're really rapid fire back to back. So arboreal achievement good option there. If you wanted to add that perk to the musket, it would be the evergreen weapon shot. Scorpion Sting is a artifact that's pretty much exclusively used in PvP. It's, uh, you know, you have the javelin, you throw it out, it brings the enemy into you. The perk upgrade that I went for on this bad boy was Keenly Jagged. Keenly Jagged, of course, when you land a crit, you add an extra bleed onto it. I think this has a lot of synergy with the way Spear's skill tree works. You do a 15% or you get a 15% extra crit chance when you attack a bleeding target. Now, of course, you can apply bleed with Skewer, but if they're out of range, you know, if you hit them with a the javelin, you pull them in, 
you apply the bleed to them while they're pulled in, and then you've already got the 15% extra crit chance before anything else is going on. So it just seems like a nice way to sort of open up with a big chunk of burst damage. So Keenly Jagged, which is with the something Animal Claw. Let's just find that again. I was at the Bear Claw, something like that. It is called the Pristine Animal Claw. That would be the upgrade of choice for me. Uh, what if it is the upgrade of choice that I've gone for with Scorpion Sting. Next up, we have the Artifact Fire Staff Inferno. Uh, this was changed recently to now do fire damage instead of strike damage. It still has the option to scale off of strength, but in my opinion, trying to do that just makes it feel worse than a fire staff that scales off of intelligence. So the other part of it is 20% extra damage when you hit a target within 15 meters. One of the best abilities for to you know make sure you consistently hit this criteria is flamethrower because that has to have them within 15 minutes of the way that you can't hit somebody more than 15 meters away with flamethrower. Uh, so if you're going to be playing with flamethrower, then the smoldering weapon shard for flame achievement seems like a great option for me. Uh, in PvP, empowering fireball is a very powerful very 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 powerful perk as well because 62 percent extra damage and if you're right next to them you could get then get another 20 percent damage so empowering fireball for pvp and maybe some idea you know to use it in pve as well uh, but i did go for the flame achievement upgrade to lean more into the flamethrower side of things but generally, I think this is just sadly worse than a normal fire staff in most situations. The Spark of Mjolnir, the artifact Warhammer, does uh, a lot of lightning damage. I think, like, something that makes sense to go for with a Warhammer is Thwarting Strikes, because it... Pretty much everything with the Warhammer, all of the abilities have grit. So this is just you do 7% extra damage with grit. But I did opt to go for the trench and strikes with the idea that we sort of land a big stun and then we go for a big heavy attack. So uh, taking a look at my Spark of Mjolnir, trench and strikes is the upgrade that I went for. But I do think thwarting strikes would also be a great option as well. So yeah, trench and strikes, which is the it's the ball hoof. Yeah, small ball hoof for trench and strikes or the drop of iron with sap. I think both of these are great options here. Um, to give it a little bit of extra damage. So if you want to do heavy attacks, go for Trench of Strikes. If you want to have your abilities do more damage, then go for Drop of Ironwood Sap. I think the Drop of Ironwood Sap actually probably ends up being the more consistent option. The Lost Stopwatch is pretty much only used in PvE these days. Uh, activates Taunt Gems, so it's a way to be a tank without um, needing to use Carnelian Gems. I guess the stuns last one second longer. It still has some application in PvE, but you do get a base damage decrease. I think the best option to go for on this one is Divine. Um, I actually went for refreshing recovery on mine, but I am planning to change it to divine at some point just for some extra incoming healing. Uh, ideally on amulets, you want to have some sort of protection perk, so like flame protection if you're doing fire mutations, uh, nature protection for nature mutations, but you, you don't want to keep changing this perk and spending 500 dark matter on all the materials every time. So as like a nice one size fits all, I think divine just for a little bit extra healing from your healer and it still currently works on potions pretty good option there. Ankh, still one of the most powerful artifacts in the game, still like used a lot in PvP mainly, but does see some use in PvE. Uh, you get extra incoming healing from your healer. I think a solid perk to put on the amulet. We didn't have this option with um, Lost Stopwatch because of the like the way the perk buckets work. I think Purify means that you can't have it, but you can have the upgrade on Ankh, and it's called Stamina Recovery. We're going to find it in the list somewhere down here. Yeah, it's with a pristine horn. Stamina Recovery, I think, is a great option. It's the up upgrade that I went for on my Ankh. It just, uh, when you drop below 50% health, you basically get your full stamina bar back, and it happens every 30 seconds. So really, really, really good for survivability. And I think that's also what you're typically using Ankh for as well. It is for survivability. It increases your heals from shirking heals, increases somebody healing you with the life staff. So Stamina Recovery, just to lean more into that survivability, makes sense to me. Endless Thirst is an artifact that I sort of worked to unlock the perks and then I decided to not upgrade it. I just don't really rate this uh, earring very highly, uh, but if you do want to use it, it's more for like, I would say 1v1s, maybe you could use it as like a healer and stuff. Healing consumables, 33% stronger, but healing potion cooldowns, 25% longer. It's also got Empowering Toast and Fortifying Toast, so when you drink a potion, you get an Empower to do more damage. You get a Fortify to take less damage. Uh, if it's all about drinking potions, then I think taking a perk that allows you to drink po potions more often, Refreshing Toast, kind of makes sense. That being said, it's only a 10% cooldown reduction, so it's like you can drink a potion two seconds more often. But still, with what the earring does, probably makes sense. I think an, another like valid option here is refreshing, uh, which means that you can then free up a perk on your armor. I actually don't think putting refreshing on your earring is too bad of an idea. Or you could go for regenerating. This is more for PvP because regenerating does have, have some issues in PvE where it can make you take aggro of the enemy. It's like you're constantly healing yourself, so you generate threats. So PvP, regenerating, refreshing toast, good option, or refreshing. 
I think I would actually put refreshing because that's going to be my recommendation to go for on the earring there. The Void Dark Plate used by a lot of tank players, uh, bruisers, PvP, PvE, has Enchanted Ward, Physical Aversion. Um, I think the next best option on top of these is health. You know, you can't, you could also look for something like thrust conditioning, slash conditioning. Those are a bit situational. I know there's been a little bit of debate lately about whether health is a good perk or not. Um, cause it, you know, it doesn't actually give you as much mitigation as other things. Freedom would be a good option for PVP. Uh, but I do believe that health still, I know, you know people are like, oh, health isn't as good as this and that. It, it just is. A nice one size fits all. It doesn't care about what sort of fight you're going into. That enemy doesn't have to be using a spear or a fire staff. It doesn't have to be PVEs. Just it is nice and applicable to every situation. So I'm going to recommend health, but you might want to consider slash conditioning, thrust conditioning, or a weapon perk if you are playing this with a particular weapon in mind. Uh, just for, you know, to, to help you guys. A vial of mercury is thrust conditioning, which would probably be the next best thing. You could also go for shirking heals as well. Excellent option, but only for PvP. So shirking heals, thrust conditioning, um, but health. Still going to be like minus one size fits all recommendation. And that is the perk that I put on Void Dark Play myself. The unmoved are boots which allow you to not be pushed around. So it turns out they're very situational, so you can't get pulled in with the artifact spear. If you're doing the final boss fight of Glacial Tarn, he can't blow you away. They have Grit Ward and Physical Aversion. Because they have Grit Ward, I believe you can't put Enchanted Ward or Elemental Aversion, which limits it. So again, I am going to recommend health, and this is going to be the same with a lot of the uh, artifact armor here. But if you do want something that is a, you know, a different option for PvP, Shirking Heals is going to be great. Um, you know, thrust conditioning, I do think is uh, a good option here as well. Or you could just go for good old refreshing. Uh, I think refreshing, probably the cheaper and like nice one size fits all option as well. So, uh, yeah, for, for like most situations, adamant, or you want to be looking at the brilliant animus and for PVP, uh, tonic of Tyrannus with shirking heals. Good, good choice there as well. Magnetic gauntlets are some gloves that are almost exclusively used by void gauntlets right now. So this is like a typically used for a void gauntlet, ice gauntlet build. Crit chance increased by 50%. Crit damage reduced by up to 50%. The reason why these are really good with void gauntlet is because it has a lot of cooldown reduction when you crit. So 5% cooldown reduction on all abilities on critical hit and it can stack up to five times. So typically what you see is somebody fires like a big orb of decay into a pack of enemies. It hits a bunch of crits and then the cooldown is immediately available to go again. To that extent, because I believe it's mainly played with Void Gauntlet and nothing else currently, I actually went for uh, Nullifying Oblivion, which is a really good perk to sort of synergize with that. Now, this is much more of a PvP thing. It's almost exclusively for PvP as opposed to PvE. Um, if you did want to use it in both PvE and PvP, you could go for the health upgrade, uh, but Nullifying Oblivion, which can be found with the Star Metal Void Gauntlet Charm perk, or craft mod, uh, that is the upgrade that I personally went for there. Unyielding is a helmet that's, uh, again, a PvP exclusive thing, so receive 20% less damage from critical hits. So if we're going to be using this in PvP because it is PvP only, then you may as well go for the PvP only perk of shirking heals. Uh, I think that just makes a lot of sense. But again, you know, health could be a decent option or thrust conditioning. But the recommendation is shirking heals with the tonic of Tyrannus on this bad boy. Freedom, the artifact heavy legs reduce stun slow and root duration. So it's like having more and more freedom. Um, then it obviously has perk one freedom, perk two enchanted ward, which turns off elemental aversion and stuff like that. You could go for good old health. You know, it's a, a, a good perk choice, uh, even though it is very expensive. And I again, I know I don't want to talk about it too much because there's going to be people in the comments saying that health is crap and I've got it all wrong. <laughs> so, but again, these are more of a PvP thing. So I think Tonic of Tyrannus for the Shirking Keels, uh, because this is, like I say, very much PvP centric, makes a lot of sense. But you could also put Refreshing um, on these bad boys as well, which would be achieved through the Brilliant Animus. Is that the name of it? Let me just double check. We should have learned by now what, like, you know, 20 minutes into this video. Uh, where is it? 25 minutes into this video. Where the heck? There we go. Brilliant Animus. Uh, there it is. <laughs> so, yeah, Brilliant Animus is a, a sort of generic perk. Tonic of Tyrannus, if you are going to be using these in PvP, which I believe most people probably would be. Featherweight is a very versatile chess piece. It's used by DPS. It's used by healers. I don't think it's really used by tanks. Um, but, yeah, basically the chest that doesn't weigh anything, so you can combine it with other pieces of heavy armor and then get more mitigation. It's got refreshing. It's got physical aversion. I think the nice one-size-fits-all perk for this is health. Um, but because, you know, I'm aware that there are there is this sort of anti-health movement going around, 
then I could also recommend Shirking Heels for PvP. Or you could go for a little bit of a thrust conditioning. I do believe this is, again, probably more PvP centric because you're getting hit with bows and stuff, but it does kick in pretty often in PvE. So uh, thrust conditioning, shirking heals, or just health as a nice one size fits all with the Adamant Craft mod there. Tumblr feet wraps, like a, a few of the other artifacts we we're going through, are more PvP centric. You typically see these people using them in a sort of 1v1, 3v3, and sometimes an outpost rush as well. They have refreshing and physical aversion, just like with Featherweight. Bearing in mind that they are more PvP centric, I think the good old uh, shirking heals is a great option to go for here because it, again it's another proc with all the other shirking stuff that comes in you know it's it's already got shirking blessing so you could just lean more into that and go uh, you know feast off famine basically but the good old one size fits all would be a health perk you know you could use these in a lot of different setups with health so adamant or tonic of tyrannus is the recommendation here great wizard's hat just like with the other two it has a refreshing physical aversion you bet it I'm, I'm recommending health again here as a nice one size fits all but for pvp you could go for shirking heals um, when you dodge you get some extra healing back or you could you know if you're going to be playing this with like fire staff ice gone this is typically going to be played with a magical weapon right and usually uh some sort of yeah like a fire staff ice staff or ice gauntlet life staff then you could put a, a weapon perk on it like if I was going to be playing this with Life Staff, we could go for Keen Beacon. If I was going to be playing it with Fire Staff, we could go for Empowering Fireball or uh, Refreshing Pillar of Fire. Um, and then again, in PvP, we could go for that Tonic Kataranus Shirking Heals. The Koya's Knee Guards often end up being worse than Featherweight for the amount of uh, incoming damage they reduce. They have Enchanted Ward and Physical Aversion. Uh, this is, again, I think typically more of a PvP thing. Incoming ranged attacks deal 10% less damage from Ryu, usually in PvE. You're getting hit by melee enemies. There are the occasional archer and stuff like that. So considering that they're more of a, in my opinion, more of a PvP thing, makes sense to put shirking heals on them to get that extra incoming healing. Um, but again, you know, I do think health is a nice sort of one size fits all for every kind of different build in here as well. Non-conditional makes it good in PvE and PvP. So health or tonic of Tyrannus. Uh, health obviously achieved with the Adam and Craft mod. Nimble Coat is an artifact armor that actually has health on it. It's, uh, I think it's the only artifact armor currently in the game that does have health, so it's health refreshing. I think the best third perk that you could put on here is going to be Enchanted Ward or Elemental Aversion. Enchanted Ward can be achieved through the Hardened Crystal. Uh, we'll just find it in the list here real quick, so it should be somewhere around here. Uh, we have Armor Fragments for Elemental Aversion, and then we have Enchanted Ward... Coming up in this list any moment now. There it is. I can see it. Uh, Hardened Crystal for Enchanted Ward or Armor Fragments for Elemental Aversion. Personally, on my Nimble Coat, I went for Elemental Aversion. I just think, I don't know. It, it works a little bit better in the typical builds I play Nimble Coat. It's like Healer or, you know, it's uh, Mage DPS or something. So usually I'm getting hit with ranged attacks. And I just feel like Elemental Aversion a little bit better for, for that sort of situation. And I think this has a bit more value as a, like a, a healer player as well and mutations. Now getting down to the last few artifacts on this list, we have winged leather shoes. These are some meme boots. I wouldn't really recommend spending materials upgrading these. They have refreshing and freedom and uh, they give you the zoomies basically. So base duration of haste is increased by 50%. I, I, yeah, I think you just put like some Elemental Aversion or Enchanted Ward if you want to have these be okay. Elemental Aversion is quite a bit cheaper with the Armor Fragments. I think are only a couple hundred gold in the trading post, whereas Hardened Crystal is quite a bit more expensive. So I just go for Armor Fragments on these bad boys. Or if you are going to use them in PvP for whatever reason, then you could consider going for the... Um, Tonic of Tyrannus shirking heals as well. The Ghoul Gloves have refreshing elemental aversion. Uh, when you hit a foe that is below half health, transfer a debuff. I think very, very, very few people use these. Uh, because they already have elemental aversion, we can't put enchanted ward. If you're going to use them in PvP, then shirking heals is a great option. If you're going to use them in PvE, uh, I am going to recommend health, but I really wouldn't spend so much gold on upgrading these. Uh, I think some other sort of nice one size fits all options could also be like thrust conditioning, which is achieved through the vial of mercury, slash conditioning the drop of mercury. You know, the, the, those damage types do come up pretty often in PvE and PvP as well. The Jin Head Wrap reduces the base duration of non crowd control debuffs on you by 20%. So that's your weaken, that's your diseases and stuff like that. I know this is a favorite artifact of a few people, typically more of a PvP thing that you care about uh, disease and weaken falling off you faster. It has Vigor and Invigorated. Um, great options in PvP. Obviously, you've got Shirking Heals with Tonic of Tyrannus, or you could look to just slap good old refreshing on it as well with the Brilliant Animus. I think those are probably going to be like the cheapest and most effective options there. So, Brilliant Animus just for some cooldown reduction, or you could go for the Tonic of Tyrannus so you could 
yeah, get the Shirking Heels procs in PvP. Attuned Leather Pants, uh, an artifact that a lot of people have. You just finish the main storyline to give these. You give you lots of extra stats, typically used in DPS builds that are trying to break into uh, thresholds to pump some really big damage. Elemental Aversion and Refreshing around these bad boys, of course, in PvP. Tonic of Tyrannus would be a great option, fairly cheap to add it to the item. For PvE and, like, a, again, a, like, one size fits all, I do think health is a good option because, you know, you could use these in, like, so many different builds. Uh, they can be used as a healer even. They could be used as DPS. Maybe even some tank builds could consider using them if they want to get a specific sort of stat threshold. So health, Elemental Aversion, Refreshing, uh, very generically good. For PvP, obviously the Shirking Heels, Tonic of Tyrannus, and uh, again for like a cheaper all-round option, Vial of Mercury for Thrust Conditioning, I think is you know fairly applicable as well. Last artifact on this list, and we do have two more to get through uh, that are not, I don't currently have, is Blood Drinker, which is Hearty Leeching. It's all about lifesteal. The problem with this ring and, and rings is I think typically like putting a damage perk on them is a good idea. So ice damage, if you use it with an ice gallnut, fire damage for a fire staff. Bloodletting if you got to use it with a rapier for me though I like to use this ring in a bunch of different setups uh, So I was thinking what is a perk that is applicable to kind of every setup in the game and uh, the conclusion that I came to was crit chance So keen awareness, so I'm recommending a draft of corrupted Ica um, Because oh, that just you know extra crit chance kind of everybody other than healers would like a little bit of extra crit chance And even healers do like crit chance for their void gauntlet so they can uh, get their cooldowns more often so keen awareness which is the draft of Corrupted Ica is the recommendation for Blood Drinker. Now, as I mentioned, the only other artifacts that I don't currently have are Vengeance, which is the artifact lifestyle. Very sad that I don't have this, but <laughs> still, despite my best attempts, I can't get it. This is a artifact lifestyle. We'll take the camera off here. We'll go full screen. It has Keen Beacon, Refreshing Move, Enchanted. It is a bit of a meme, um, but because it's still a lifestyle, you still want to be doing healing. I think your best option you can go for here is Blessed, which is achieved with the Sliver of Crystal Azoth. It's still a life staff. You still want to be doing some healing with it. Um, so yeah, the Sliver of Crystal Azoth for... Crystallized Azoth for Blast on this makes the most sense in my opinion. The only other artifact that we don't currently have are the Quick Draw Gloves. These have Refreshing Freedom. They got the uh, immunity to damage for after you weapon swap. I think these are more of like a dueling weapon for like 1v1s and stuff like that. So if you're going to be using this for PvP, then of course the good old Tonic of Tyrannus for Shirking Heals would be a great option. Also Enchanted Ward or Elemental Aversion as a more generic uh, upgrade perk as well. So Hardened Crystal or Armor Fragments for Elemental Aversion to be more generic. But seeing as they're, you know, looking like they're very much a PvP-centric item, then I think Shirking Heals would be great here as well. All right, friends, so that does it for this video. Hopefully you found it useful. Um, I do believe we covered every artifact there. Fingers crossed I haven't managed to miss something. If you guys have any other suggestions for any artifacts we covered in this list, because I haven't had a chance to play with every artifact extensively, you know, or there's some that I definitely play with more than others, like the unmoved and unyielding. I barely play with things like that. So yeah, if you're somebody who mains one of those artifacts and you find something that works really well for you let me know in the comments down below always open to some like you know constructive criticism and uh yeah like i say if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you go ahead and click the like button subscribe for more and i'll see you guys all in the next video